if you are expecting to be in a president's officer role, this isn't the session. So just wanna make sure that you're on the right plane here. Effective communication should be a journey as an animated, audacious communicator. Our presenter today strives to take her audience on a journey. Membership in Toastmasters has provided rich opportunities to stand before a variety of audiences and attitudes. Wilma is a dual club member and has served as mentor for both members and clubs. She has served as club officer, contest chair, co-chair, trainer. She's been in speech contests. She's done all sorts of roles. In this presentation today, you will have fun, you will be entertained, and you will experience discomfort. Please welcome Wilma Igwe. Thank you so much. Can you guys hear me clearly? Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Can you see me at all? I mean, if you want to, that's up to you. So mm. <laughs> that's fine. You don't, I mean, you don't have to if you don't want to, that's all good. Which one is she? Huh? Which one is she? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you have to put it in like what speaker view? If you need to do that. You don't need to see me. Or hide non-video. If you hide non-video, uh non-video participants, my real face will show up, I believe. I have to I think you have to pin yourself. Oh, uh pin myself. Yeah, because you're using one. Uh, as audio and one is video. Okay, so let me pin. Am I pinned now? I should be pinned. You can also use the bar in the middle and slide it to make the presentation a little smaller and make the speaker yes. bigger too. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you do that, that actually does well too. There's a slider in the middle and then there's one over to the side for the chat if you needed to do that. I'll let y'all play with that because this is just going to be, okay, so let me explain. There is rarely growth with, oh, how much time do I have and who's my timer? Okay, time. Okay, <laughs> okay when, thank you. When do we need to, we, we're, because we're going straight, you're going to be teaching the next one. I know. Okay, what? so that's fine. We, we'll what? get this. I'm going to just get rolling and I'll look at but give me a holler when I get somewhere close. I don't care. Uh, I'm trying to remember when this one's supposed to be done. Grace, um, I'm no. hoping I'm done in 45 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna set that up. All right. So the reason that I decided to do this is because I was asked the other day. <laughs> there you go. I um, I have this, I opened with this quote. This is actually my test screen. There is rarely growth without discomfort. That goes for anything that you do, whether it's giving birth, uh, wait a minute, my thing's not doing, whether it's giving birth, whether it is getting a new job, learning a new skill, making your first icebreaker speech, and your second, going into your first pathway path. It's uncomfortable. Change is uncomfortable, but that's what makes life, life. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, before we begin, I would love for you to think in terms of a, a table topic or a tough topic. And if you have questions, please post them in the chat. I have two computers up, so I'm sorry if you see my little uh, doppelganger over there. She looks just like me, except my cheeks aren't rosy today. <laughs> uh, but anyway, if you do have a question, post it in the chat and somebody will scream at me or you know, throw your hands in the air. Controversy, stepping into your discomfort zone. We talk all the time about you got to get out of your comfort zone. You got to get out of your comfort zone and try something new, eat something new, go somewhere new, do something new. March 17th, 2020, roughly that day, I had to do something new. They threw a computer at me and a desk, took my desktop piled it in my car, said, go home, set this up. You need to be working in the morning. I'm like, I don't work at home. I need an office. I don't want to work at home. And besides, Medtronic stuff does not go with my decor. No. <laughs> well, I learned very quickly after I cried for about four days that it's okay. You're just adjusting to this change. 
And then I went to the grocery store and they said, you can't come in here without a mask on. And I'm like, but then that means that everybody is, everybody has cooties and I was afraid. It always feels strange to do something different. Of all the people to give me a quote today, Tupac, my dog, my dog. Tupac Shakur said, out of anger comes controversy. Out of controversy comes conversation. And then from conversation comes action. The beautiful, or for me, the most beautiful part of this quote, this testimonial, is that out of controversy comes conversation. If you don't believe that, get ready for contest season. And if you are doing your contest virtually, you're visiting contests around the country, around the globe, you are going to hear controversial topics, especially at the lower levels, where people are daring to just step out and say something that has not been said before, or to vent, or to sing whatever and do whatever they want to do. Get ready for it. And get ready for, for the opportunity to understand. Understanding is everything. We're going to have conversations going forward. Why now? Well, right now we know that, and I put the clash, any of you that all rock, all you all rockers, hey, it's the clash. My son asked me, uh, why, why do they have the, is that the name of a record? I said, you know what, get away from me. Uh, he's young, he doesn't get it, but he'll look it up. But life is clashing all around us. Ideas and ideals are clashing. There are now, with these isolations that we're having, there are people that are experiencing mental health issues. My sister is the principal. She's the head principal at San Marcos High School. Yeah, my baby sister. I taught her everything she knows. But she explained to me that this, uh, so far, since they've gone back to school, they have had, there were two months that they have had three suicides per month. I said, you got to be kidding me. She said, I, she said, I, I'm losing my mind because I, she said, these are my babies. These are my babies. I've taught some of these kids in junior high. I'm their principal now. And here I am and I'm losing my kids. And she explained to me, there are some of them that are battling depression, adults, parents, everyone. And of course, everyone is being affected by, by, COVID, by the virus. The isolation, though, is what's driving kids absolutely insane. No one to talk to. Confederate monuments coming down. People are saying, no, tear it down. No, pick it up. It's history. No, it's heritage. No, it's terrible, terrible thing. George Floyd. Vaccines that are coming too fast and maybe, maybe not checked out all the way. I saw an article yesterday that was in my stream on my uh, Google stream. And there was a notion that it is possible that there's going to be an incentive, a cash incentive, like the, the stimulus checks, if you take the vaccine. Take the vaccine for $1,500. And I'm just like, wow, that is frightening. Small businesses that are closing their doors and putting families in absolute economic peril, layoffs, education upheavals. Is my kid in school? Is he not in school? What are we doing? We've got a lot going on now. And that's just in the United States. The rest of the world, there's civil wars. There's all sorts of civil unrest. And of course, we just got through an election that we're still trying to verify the results. There's a lot to talk about. And it is, as Toastmasters, you realize that there's almost 300,000 toast, there's more than 300,000 Toastmasters around the world. We have something to say. We cannot afford to just be all you can be, do all you can do, love yourself and love everyone else. There are people that are hurting and we don't wanna talk about what really, really hurts. And let me give you a hint, it's not the virus. It's not the toothache there's something much, much deeper. And we need to know that we're providing that safe place for people to express themselves. What are the benefits of a controversial topic? I wanna ask you something, you tell me, and this is interactive, so you gotta holler at me. What are the benefits of a contra 
controversial benefits? What's a benefit of having controversial topics? Throw something out there. Change. 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 Beautiful. Wakes what people else? up. What'd you say? I said it wakes people up. I, you betcha. You betcha. Exactly. Exactly. Wake it teaches up. us to listen to each other. It gives you the opportunity to listen. And you know, it's funny that we as communicators, and I always talk, I talk to us as Toastmasters. I'm, I'm speaking to us because it's kind of like talking to my own kids. You know better. We know better. We know that there are times when you got to say something. How many of you have been in a club or heard about a club that had to vote out a member that was so disruptive and so disrespectful that he, he or she could not remain in that club. We know controversy and we know that sometimes we have to deal with it. That's a hard thing to do to vote somebody out of Toastmasters. But we say in our mission, in our motto, that we're providing a safe place. And if someone is damaging or, or disrespecting or even just denouncing, de degrading that safety, they got to go. They got to go and, and think about what they're doing. Toastmasters International has a beautiful, beautiful statement. Members often hear that speeches concerning politics, religion, and sex are forbidden by Toastmasters International because such controversial subjects are not appropriate. You've heard people say that. Don't talk about your religion. Don't say the Pledge of Allegiance because that's, what about our Middle Eastern members? Don't say a prayer or an invocation. One nation under which God? I mean, we, we hear that frequently, and some people, some clubs, have gotten rid of pledge and invocation. Some, it's a still a point of com a bone of contention within their membership, and then it's, well, why didn't he stand up? Why didn't she stand up? They're not saluting. It's Veterans Day. Well, but they may, that may not be their choice. That's their choice, and we have to respect that and understand that we don't have to take that personally. Toastmasters International does not prohibit any, any speech topic, content, or even language. Not even language. I stress that because, for instance, if you are going to be a contest judge this year or a contestant, if you're a contestant, definitely you want to make sure that you're respectful because you can offend someone. If you are a judge, however, if someone drops the N-word, no, you do not, you do not, I'm saying, do not count that against them as a matter of, well, they said that and that's done. Listen to the speech, evaluate or judge the entire speech on its content. And if that is something, if a word or an expletive is in there that you disagree with, or, oh, I can't believe they said that, I'm just going to protest silently by marking them off, don't do that. Safe place. Protect the safety, and then listen to the content and judge based on the ballot. I'm kind of digressing there, but that's very, very important. This position from Toastmasters International is on their website. It's been on the website since I've been a Toastmaster. And therefore, if you have someone that says, no, we're not supposed to talk about that, and I'm not coming back, find someone to have that conversation. It's okay. It's okay. I understand this makes you uncomfortable. Bear with us while we get through this moment and let them, let that person grow, and let's see if we can grow with them. You don't have to agree, but we do have to honor their opinion and their statement and their experience. The one thing in the world we cannot, we cannot refute is another person's experience. Any questions, any comments so far? Cool. Y'all are sweet. The benefits of controversial topics, and again, I quote from the Toastmaster website, I put in blue the, the benefits, the real world benefits that they mentioned. Toastmasters International recognizes that club members may learn much about the world from listening around, world around them, of course, but live, they learn about the world listening to other speeches on a variety of subjects. The variety can add interest to club meetings can stimulate thoughts and ideas. And for these reasons, Toastmasters International does not place restrictions 
on topics, content, or language in any speech. At this moment, I would like to let you know that we are going to be talking about presenting. I'm not talking about writing speeches. That's something you're going to do with your club, with your members, with your mentors. You're going to, you're, you can write your own speeches. But there are some pointers and some things that I want you to think about when you're dealing with a controversial issue. This particular screen or this particular slide is just one that I found that lists a lot of issues and a lot of different things that are contentious when it comes to talking about things in a Toastmasters meeting. Gay marriage, death penalty, creation conspiracy, uh, abortion, oh my goodness, the, 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 Supreme, the Supreme Court changes, politics of course, religion, civil unions, pornography, and of course, you know, even in the last 10, 20 years, 10 years, we have seen the legalization of marijuana. When people, there are thousands and thousands of people who are, for instance, in prison and arrested. Some doing life because of third strikes for literally having a joint in their pocket. And now it's legal. And those people are still languishing in jail in prisons around our country. There's so many things. Uh, euthanasia, that's huge. And especially now with people who are, and bless them all and bless their families, who are struggling with the coronavirus. There are people who are saying, pull the plug, don't do it, pull it, no, don't. And there's so many things that are going on. I want you to think about some, uh, I want to ask you a little bit about your experience with controversial presentations, okay? Controversy, I love this. Religion and politics, no right turn. <laughs> I love that. I have one. Oh, yes. Go right ahead, please. Okay. What I'm about to say will not work well in South Texas. And I think because it will not work well in South Texas, I'm going to say it. Please do not judge me morally. So... A couple of weeks ago, I observed the division contest of the humorous speech in Scotland. One of the contestants in the division contest was an Oriental man who had moved to Scotland so he said he spoke Korean. He said he spoke French. He spoke English, Scottish. I can't even say the word. And he spoke cunnilingus, which is female oral sex. <laughs> oh, gosh. Wow. He quoted RuPaul. This guy had come, I mean, if that's not controversial, I'm, I'm kind of vaporing here, just saying the word. <laughs> but he said it with freedom and abandon at a division contest. Yeah. And he's gone all the way. Yeah. That is controversial. That's and please don't judge me. That is don't judge me. <laughs> that is extremely controversial. Okay, so contrasting that, and I thank you for that very courageous, courageous uh, addition. That uh, I don't know if any of you remember about. I want to say maybe for within the last four or five years, there was a gentleman who made a humorous speech about flatulence, and the audience was so. The audience was split. The audience, there were some people that were just cracking up, thought it was the funniest thing ever. There were some people who were just so offended. They, like you said, had the vapors. They were hot flashing and, and crossing their arms and and just just absolutely appalled that this person made this speech. One of the things that did happen is that, well, he didn't he didn't advance. He he lost the contest, even though the audience response was so favorable for him that you kind of thought he would probably place in the top three or something. And 
it, it became a thing that was very wounding for him. And he wound up quitting Toastmasters after just, you know, railing about it for a long time. And one of the things that, that we have to understand, like you said, regionally, there are certain things that will not fly. It, we understand that. But if we as individuals maintain the integrity of the safe environment that we provide, maintain the integrity of the contest that we judge, maintain the integrity of the information that we present, we will do so, so much to open the conversations that we need to open. And now these conversations are not just local in our little club, in our little, in the back room of a restaurant. These are now global. These are people that are online. You're in Scotland talking to someone. Someone else is in Australia. I've been to Canada and Australia a few times. So it's, it's very, very important that we understand that we're opening a dialogue and educating people globally. And that's what Toastmasters does. Therefore, we need to take that next step because it's going to require that for us to remain relevant. Relevance is everything. Have any of you ever made a tough talk, a talk that was difficult, difficult, gave, gave rough information? Have you done that? This is Cynthia. Okay. Yes. Um, at two different events that were not a Toastmasters club meeting, however, Toastmasters were there and I was getting credit for the speeches, one being Women's History Month at Lackland Air Force Base. The speech was on sexual harassment and assault in the military wow. and how it's been going on since forever and has not stopped no matter what kind of training. And so I gave personal life examples because B, I've never been discriminated against for being white, but I have been discriminated against for being a woman. And I'm just gonna say a smart woman or smart ass, whichever way you wanna take it. But um, the, the public affairs office said, let me see your speech. And I had to type it out and they said, well, you can't say these words. And I said, but I'm quoting a letter that was written to me and that letter had, excuse me again, don't judge me like Tracy said, the guy said something about blowjobs and public affairs said, you can't say that. So I had to couch it as sexual acts or something, which is equally as bad. However, my audience was 90% female veterans who women 10 and 15, 20 years older than me, and even General Pringle, they all said, we've been there. And it was officer and enlisted and black and white, and it didn't matter. Almost every woman in the room had been either harassed or assaulted. So that was a tough speech and it made me cry. And I didn't think I would because I've been talking about it for 20 years. But when you're in a room with sympathy, or empathy, um, the emotion is very palatable. And Ricky Hughes was there and she got, I got credit for the speech because it fit one of my um, past speeches. But it is controversial because not everybody wants to hear that. And I'm not gonna say men don't wanna hear it. Well, just people in general, it's hard to say we have uniformed heroes and then you see what's happening at El Paso and on ships and other places. So that's Beautiful. my contribution. Thank you. I thank you very much. Doug, you had your hand up. Tell us a little bit about your experience. I gave a talk well, years ago to a bunch of mental health professionals. And what it was about was about um, people doing, the overall theme of the speech was integrity and having integrity. And one of the things, what I, the story that I told and that I really wanted to then again, and, and I broke it with humor, which saved, was saved today because they looked shocked. And I was saying that everyone, everyone, all of us start off with the little, when we're born, we have a wagon that's attached to our hips and it follows us around. But every time we're out of integrity, what happens is we throw a rock into that wagon. And if you notice as people get older, they start leaning over, you know, they start leaning forward. Well, that's because the wagon is getting so heavy. Wow. And and the speech is getting, and the speech was it was a serious, hard speech because I'm talking to mental, mental professionals and we're talking about something they certainly should know about, but they were acting like they'd never heard of it. 
And what I got to was simply this. Was I brought him to the point to where we said, or I said, this has got to stop. We've got to learn a way to take care of this during our lifetimes. And mental, mental professional people are, in fact, inhibiting people from, from cleaning up their act. So really what it comes down to, ladies and gentlemen, is it's time to get our rocks off. <laughs> and that was the response I got, which, wow. of course, which allowed, allowed the room to relax now. Yes. And yes. Was, anyway, so that was a, it was a, I was nervous going into it, but it worked. Pulled it I appreciate that. I appreciate yeah. that. You two have actually answered the, uh, the second portion, which is, were you successful? Yes, you were successful. Mm -hmm. But Cynthia describes how stressful it was for her. And of course, Doug, you talked about how you use levity to bring it back around and to make it a little more palatable to your audience. Have you ever evaluated a tough talk, a controversial presentation? I did one that just made me excited uh, because it was it was so frightening to me, but at the same time it was it was precious, absolutely precious. Um, I and I'll I'll talk a little bit about it when we get into our evaluation portion. But I did evaluate one a, a couple months ago when uh, at Texas Talkers actually Chad Schultz. I I came in after a, a an extended absence actually, and I got a note saying a vir virtual note, a Zoom note saying. Chad wants you to introduce his speech and evaluate it. And I was like, okay. And Texas Talkers, the evaluator introduces the speaker because they should have that information. I read his evaluation, I mean, his introduction, and it said basically a little bit about what he was talking about. And he said, and you're not going to like it. And if you don't, you can suck it. And I was like, I'm supposed to say that? Yeah. Yes, read it as is. And I was like, whoa, yeah. fine. I read this, I read the introduction. And then when I realized what he was going to talk about, I turned off my camera because I didn't want people in the audience looking at me for a response or for her, what she, what she thinking, what she feeling. No, 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 focus on the speaker. Chad made a beautiful, absolutely incredible speech about, and he encompassed in, in rapid succession with video, with a PowerPoint presentation about, he mentioned and showed the horrifying uh, scene with George Floyd. He showed uh, Indian women, or I think there were East Asian women, some East Asian women who were in uh, peril. He showed police brutality. He showed everything you could possibly show. He showed protesters. He showed fire, rocks, gloom, doom, fire and brimstone. And he made this speech about the, the injustices that were going on and why people are protesting. And then he talked about trying to, wanting to understand and how I need to, how, how he needed to just get in people's face and say, look, this is happening. It was a very, very militant presentation. We had an audience that had people from other countries as well as our own local members. And I watched this and he even told me, he said, you're not gonna like anything I say. The beautiful thing about his presentation is he did not take a side of, we got to do this, we got to do that. But he just put the information in your face that was so, it was like, whoa, I need to do something. How do I, and then my question was, how do I evaluate that? So it was very, very interesting. And I do feel like I was successful in doing my part. And his was absolutely incredible. I, 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 was, I was shocked and it was wonderful. We're gonna go into presenting them. When we're presenting tough topics, the one thing I tell you, if you're going to do it, practice, practice, practice. I know sometimes, especially old pros, we think, yeah, we got this, we got this. But the reason I will tell you to practice, and again, this is my opinion and this is my experience and my experience in working with other people who have done this before. That is monitor your verbal and nonverbal response. As Toastmasters, the audience is everything. And then the speaker is everything else. So we have to make sure that we still stay connected. We look into the camera. We look into the audience's eyes. And we make sure that we are watching our nonverbal responses, relaxed faces, that we're not getting tense and starting to escalate or modulate our voices to uncomfortable octaves, strained or angry sounding. 
we're not supposed to be angry. We can be emphatic without being hostile. And that means you can still embrace your anger, but you want to be emphatic and empathetic to your audience. You don't want to intimidate with your information. Provide a strong introduction. The reason that I believe that that is so important is that whoever's introducing you needs to be the one that shares your disclaimers, your warnings. Prepare that introducer. The person that's going to be introducing you, talk to them and say, look, this is what I'm going to say. Like Chad's speech introduction with me, I have to tell the audience, yeah, if you don't like what I'm saying, then, you know, bite me. And I was like, well, he said, like I said, you can just suck it. And I was like, I don't like that. Say it anyway. And I'm thinking, well, I maybe I can find another word. No, I want it like that. Because it is my job to introduce him. And I don't want to put the speaker in the position of reintroducing him or herself. That takes up valuable time and it dilutes the impact of their presentation. Begin confidently and concisely. When you use the active speech, make sure that you're using active, um, what do you say, active voice. I believe this. My experience with this particular topic is, and get into your speech. Don't, as a speaker, stand there and say, well, I'm sorry I'm going to talk about this, and this is, you know, I, I, I feel like this is really hard, and it's going to be tough for me, and I just want you guys to understand, I'm not talking to you personally. Don't do that. If you feel that you have to make excuses or apologize for what you're going to say, don't make that speech. Because you will reduce your own efficacy and your own effectiveness. Not to mention, your audience is not going to believe you if you don't believe you. So start and just hit it. Hit it and quit it. Alternate facts and statistics with your opinions. A lecture or a preaching, a little sermon, the, the nagging little things that we do, just voicing our opinions, that's for your family. That's for your spouses, your significant others, your kids, your dog. But when you're talking to an audience, you want to make sure that you can back up what you're saying. It doesn't mean that you're trying to prove a point. The world is flat. I'm telling you, Earth is flat. Those boats are not going off into the horizon. They're actually going just so far out that they can't be seen, don't say that they're going around the world. The earth is flat. If they go far enough, they're going to fall off. How do I know this? And then I have to cite something that says, this is my source. We want to be credi credible when we are making or pre presenting a tough topic, a controversial speech. If you are a Christian and you say, this is what my Bible says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man gets to the Father, God, except through me. Then you have to say, where'd that come from? That came from the Bible, my holy Bible. Well, the Quran says something else, and the Talmud says something else, and that I'm talking to you about my Bible. This is what my book says. Make sure that you have your sources and you share that in case someone wants to verify it. Cite your, cite your sources and your resources, okay? Continued, I know that you also should avoid, and I've touched on that, avoid apologies and excuses. It dilutes your credibility, it dilutes your impact, and it can make you feel uncomfortable and unsatisfied with your, with your presentation at the end. You start feeling present, presenter's remorse. Know your topic, and of course we've said that, down in that particular column under that heading, edit your testimonial. That's important. We want your experience. But unless it is a speech about your experience, if you're talking about a broader subject, okay, if I say Black Lives Matter, well, yeah, they do. But then at the same time, all my daughters-in-law are not Black at all. <laughs> I'm teaching them, but they're not Black. <laughs> So what I have to make sure that I understand is if I'm saying something, I can tell them this is my experience. This is my experience with this, this, or this. And they're able to say, oh, okay, I got it. Lastly, I always tell presenters to breathe. Be self-aware. 
know your audience, but make sure that you're finding a way to see yourself as others are seeing you. I recommend that if you're on a Zoom meeting, find a place to put a mirror so you can see yourself, not even the video. Look at yourself in the mirror in your room. And it helps you to be mindful to breathe. You'll see, your, you see the live action of your body mo movements. You'll see that glare in your eye and that furrow that gets in your forehead that makes you look a little intimidating if you get too close to the camera. Breathe. When it comes to, and I'm gonna kind of rush a little bit because we are going into the time. I know we have to be done in a little bit. In evaluating tough topics, this is probably my favorite part and the most important part to me. And that is first and foremost, when you're evaluating, be an ally. Nothing changes between your relationship with your speaker and your evaluator. The evaluator has a purpose. What is that purpose? Anybody? What is that purpose of the evaluator? Oh, okay. Thank you, Kathy. I appreciate that. Then I can slow down a little bit. What is the evaluator's purpose of any speech? Evaluate the content, not the appropriateness. I guess that's the way to say it. And all of the machinations that were taught of giving a speech and the clear opening middle body not the words or the content. Exactly, exactly. Do not, do not for anything, try to make this about that person. But as an ally, there are certain things that you want to do. And we know this, but when a person has just made a presentation and you are absolutely offended to the core with their stance, it is very easy to feel or assume that you have not been, you have not been educated or informed, but you have been scolded. Somebody just got in your face and just told you how you ought to be, think, and do. I, I'm in a, uh, I started going to a, a Bible study group because they were reading this book. They were studying out of a book called Kings and Presidents, which is very, very interesting. And the book talks about how churches roll along, roll along just fine. Everybody's love and peace and chicken grease and they're helping everybody. But when it comes to an election year, they suddenly break into factions and the Democrats say this, no, I'm sorry, the liberals are this way and the conservatives are that way and all of you, you people are rednecks and you people are hippies and no, Black Lives Matter, no, all lives matter. And it's like, yeah, but the two is actually implied. But, <laughs> and so everybody gets all angry and they fall apart. And then they sulk when their guy wins and they gloat when their guy loses or when their guy loses and you know what I'm saying, when one wins and one loses, there's a lot of gloating and there's a lot of hurt. And then they spend months trying to repair that. So I thought I'd go into this group. I'm the only black person in the group. It's kind of funny. It's a big house. So we can socially distance. You can wear your mask. I feel very comfortable. But I sit in a separate room. Actually, everyone is in one big room and I sit in the door just outside of the room. So it looks, it looks very strange that you have all these people, there's 10 people, and then you have this black woman sitting <laughs> over kind of off on the edge. I said, no, 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 I like it over here. And the host said, well, you don't have to sit right there. I said, is it making you uncomfortable? Yes. I said, well, get over yourself. I like sitting here, but why? I said, because you have an extra chair. I got a little thing so I can put my coffee over here, my feet up, I don't have to deal with anybody. I said, and if I feel like playing that vicious game, I can look at everyone quite sternly and they realize that I'm between them and their car. <laughs> <laughs> And it makes people so nervous. It's like, what's she doing? I'm like, here's the deal. I still want you to understand that there's some things that you can, I'm safe. You can say whatever you want to say with me. If you have questions or, or comments about the Black Lives Matter movement, if you have questions about the, the uh, you know, are all gay people going to be burning hell and it's an abomination? I said, hit me with that because I can break it off for you. I'm good with that. If you have issues about you know, marriages and cheating, if you have issues about drugs, wife battering, oh my goodness, wife battering within the, within the church community, 
a lot of experience in that because I work with battered women forever. I did that for years and years and years. And I also used to do groups with batterers. I used to sit in rooms with 20 men who thought it was thought nothing of beating their wives, their children, and even their mothers. I said, I used to do that. I'm good with you. I wanted to do that because I wanted to make sure that they understood. You know, I, I'm silly and I, I will add some levity to it. But at the same time, there are questions that we need to explore together and I wanna walk you through that. I want to be, like an evaluator, your ally. Make that eye contact with them and not stare them down, but make eye contact. It's, it's, there's a difference. I'm, I'm going to talk about this and then yell at people. No, nah, we can't do that. Oh, thank you, sir, I appreciate you. And you know I'm going to go over because Kathy just said that I got uh, till 1210. So I'll probably go uh, like a green few more minutes. in three minutes. Huh? You're green in three minutes. We don't oh. end this. We don't start the next one till 1215. Sorry, Debbie. Oh, okay, that's cool. I, I'll still finish a little bit early. I didn't know that. But I, thank you so much. So she checked the time. Give me a green, red, uh, Doug. A pretty green. Like a Christmas green. With a little yellow in it. Because I like that kind of color. Anyway. <laughs> don't make... <laughs> Don't make, as an evaluator, personal rebuttals. How many times have you made a speech and someone took, the evaluator took the time to say, you know, um, you know, a lot of people would disagree with what you said and that's a really controversial content, uh, speech. And you know, it, it, it's, it's, I've heard that before and I remember hearing that on the news or I've seen it. And they take that three minutes precious three minutes to give you feedback to talk about or to provide either a rebuttal or give their opinion or their view or to just kind of go off somewhere. That happens. And a lot of times it happens because we don't know what to say. What should I say right now? That was a big speech. Should I ignore it? What am I doing? Don't make a personal rebuttal get right to the point of what you do as an evaluator. I'm going to give you some pointers, you know, hey, Joe, that was a beautiful presentation and I thank you for making that and having that the courage to make bring such a beautiful and controversial topic to our club. As your evaluator, I'm going to cite some things you, you did well, note what I said, things that you did well. I'll point out a couple of areas of improvement and challenge you to take this presentation to the next level. And then start with that, keep your word, tell them what you're gonna do and then do it. Don't fake feigned empathy or sympathy. That one is very, very tough. And that one is extremely difficult. I've run into that before where uh, I made a speech or a few months ago where I made a presentation at, a, in a meeting actually. And <laughs> everybody was in this mode of, you know, power to the people, sister. And I was like, no, there's no power to the people. I got work to do. <laughs> but what I want you to, I want you to be informed. And if you have questions, but don't feel sorry for me. I'm living, I'm living the life. I'm living the life that I live. And my mindset is very different. I just want you to be informed and that's it. But don't patronize or give me platitudes because that does nothing for me, especially if you're evaluating me, don't feel sorry for me. And that opportunity is gonna come up when you're dealing with people who, for instance, have been affected by COVID and everybody's gonna know somebody who's been affected. We don't want to just, you know, I, I understand when we say, I'm sorry for your loss, but Cynthia and anyone else who's been in the military, what does it mean now when you see someone and they say, you got a military card? Yes. And they say, thank you for your service. Does it mean anything to you anymore? I'm just going to say it, it can be diluted because yeah. we live in San Antonio. Of course. But when I go other places, like my family in Ohio, and I ask if there's a military discount, huh? What? Oh, are you are you a wife? Well, yes, I am, but I also have my own blue card. And 
they're much more, oh, wow, that's great. You know, women in the military. But in San Antonio, it gets a little bit diluted. But, I, you know, I saw a commercial recently. It was a YouTube thing. I never saw it on TV where a Vietnam vet was sitting at a coffee counter when a young nowadays soldier walked in and everyone's like, oh, thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Can my son take a picture with you? And the Today vet told the little boy that man at the counter who had the Vietnam tat on his arm, he's a hero too. Go take a picture with him. And I thought that exemplified how do you take somebody now who's 75 years old and say, gee, we're sorry that we didn't like it when you were in a war? You know, anyway, I, I digress, but. Um, yeah, but you know, it, it's one of those situations where I hear it a lot. And then there's some people who say it means the world to me when you say that. And then there's some people who say, you know, I, I don't think you, you're just saying it to say it. It's like when you sneeze and somebody says, bless you. It's like, I'm sneezing, you know, okay, fine. You just got to go with it. But don't be fake. That's the, that's the big thing. Make sure that you are being sincere and focused on the evaluation. I just want to say one thing. I had um, a boss once, and she just happened to be an Army colonel and a physician, who said, thank you for your work today, like a parrot every day, whether I did good work or bad work, and she said it to everyone, it meant nothing. There you so, go. There you yeah. go. And don't be that evaluator who says the same thing to every single person every single time. Make sure that you're giving some thought. And lastly, and Cynthia mentioned this and several of you have, evaluate the presentation. You are not to evaluate the person and their opinion. I'm right now wearing a handcuff necklace as well as a Black Lives Matter fist. <laughs> and sometimes I wear a Black Lives Matter t-shirt and then go and ask for free food at the barbecue joint across the street. And they give it to me. <laughs> that peach cobbler is killer. I'm like, I want peach cobbler. Y'all gonna put that on the house. And they go, yes, ma'am. I said, mm-hmm. So, but they're friends. They're, they're cool people. They know I'm not crazy. But, you know, some people will see me in this just at HEB and look at me and then won't look at me in the eye when I talk to them. They're thinking that I may ha I have the big nappy hair. It, there's a judgment call. No, don't make the judgment. When I talk to you and say, hey, I hope you have a great day. You're doing really great here. And I appreciate that, you know, you got me through checkout fast. And they kind of look at me like, okay, what's the matter? Or, hey, kid, I got a question. What question? And you see the shoulders tense up. She's wearing, that She's wearing the thing, the thing. Don't judge the person. Well, ma Evaluate the presentation. Well, ma yes, ma'am. Yeah, I wanted to give it a uh, uh, evaluation of, of what happened in one of our clubs. We had a young man, and he'd been in Toastmasters for a while. He did a lot of sexual innuendos, talking about his love lives and many different love lives and this and that. Everybody just kind of glossed over it because it was content and, and you know, did presentation. Uh, did basically what we should do. But he had one where uh, we had another member who brought in his girlfriend. And in his presentation, he actually uh, called out the girlfriend and the guy and indicated that they were having sexual relations with one oh. another. Well, that was inappropriate. Yes. Because he was bringing in the audience. He wasn't talking about his experience. Yes. And so we then asked his mentor to have a talk with him about what was appropriate and what was not. This guy that he had talked about actually quit the club. So it was that appropriate. And so we did lose a member from that and possibly a different prospect, his girlfriend, um, that came. But there are certain things that we let the mentor handle it. And we asked the mentor uh, to handle it. Shirley, I agree with that. And thank you so much. That's absolutely insightful. That's one of the things that you do want to do. Just like we mentioned earlier that you can vote a club member out for being disruptive over a period of time. When a person makes an error like that or an error in judgment that way, where they're calling out a person for whatever reason, you want to make sure that that person is addressed immediately. 
I would say do it without humiliating them in front of the meeting. You know, don't jump on them. Oh, that was just so terrible. Hey, Mr. Hey, Jane Doe, John Doe, can I talk to you for a minute? And usually when you do that, you want to have at least two people in that meeting. So his mentor and say your VPE or your S, your sergeant at arms, you want two members there who can be there to witness and counsel and coach that person, but also to maintain the confidentiality and dignity of that individual who may have just stepped off in, you know, off the deep end. Thank you so very, very much, Shirley. I appreciate that. One of the things that I say is that whenever you're going to do or present a, com a controversial topic, there's nothing that's off limits unless your club says it is off limits. So check your bylaws if you're going to go on a series. Your club can say, we don't talk about religion here. We don't talk about sex here. We don't talk about rock and roll here. We don't talk about women here because we don't have any women here. <laughs> My my sisters and I are starting what we call the Chest Air Chicks Club. <laughs> we're like, we're just going to tell everybody how to live their life because we're old and cranky. But you want to make sure that you do that. Have that checks and balances. I know that we are almost out of time, but do you have any questions? The last question for me? Wilma. Yes, ma'am. Can I make a comment based off of what you said for nothing is off limits? Go ahead. Go ahead. When you are planning your speeches... If you know that it's going to be an emotionally charged topic, choose your words and your subjects very carefully because you don't know what your club members have been through and you don't want to trigger them to do something bad. If, you, if, if someone has been through an emotionally traumatic event, you don't want to accidentally trigger them into another depression or suicidal ideation or something like that. So you want to be very careful that you don't accidentally cause them to relive something this is now this is very true but because that is out of their realm that's where i do believe that is out of your control or out of your knowledge but i will say i agree with you wholeheartedly and that's why it is important to make sure that the person that is introducing you has a a a seriously detailed introduction so that they can say this person is going to be talking about this, that, or the other. Let your introducer say, your person introducing you, say what you're going to talk about so they can make the, um, what do you call it? They make the decision. The audience can make that decision to, you know, I don't want to hear that. That's too close to home. And they can leave that. And as a presenter, you also want to make sure that you're speaking from your, not what everybody else ought to do. You don't get to do that. But you do get to say, this is my experience, it's what I would like to see. Own your, own your presentation. I agree with you wholeheartedly because no one wants to be the one that triggers someone to do something. So that's, that's beautiful. Beautiful. I thank you so much, Jody. Hey, you guys. Well, oh, people, sorry. Are start, people are starting to come in for the next yes. session, although we don't start till 1215. I'm going to okay. stop the recording, but if you want to keep talking to Wilma about this, we're not starting the next one until 1215. If you're going to be in this one again with Wilma, great. If you need the other Zoom link, we can give you that for a different presentation. But thanks, everybody, for being yeah. on this call. And Wilma, I had double booked you. You were supposed to teach president. My bad. But Jean, Jean stepped up and took it. So hallelujah for Jean. Oh, and I had, so I would have been triple booked. Are you kidding me? Yes, ma'am. My fault. My bad. I'm about I'm to make a controversial speech. At old age. 